Welcome back to your triathlon mobility daily video. So today we're going to start off with some T-spine mobilization using the lacrosse ball. So I'm thinking about this upper mid part of the spine which is going to affect my overhead mobility and in turn my position in the water. So I'm aiming to create a nice line in the water which is going to be hindered if you struggle with the overhead mobility. So to start us off, we're going to try and get the lacrosse ball kind of in between the spine and the scapula. So you never want to feel like it's actually bone on, on the bone. You want to feel like it's really trying to get into the muscle there between that scapula and T-spine. Um, I'm going to start quite high up, up towards the traps. Uh, and then we're going to spend maybe two minutes on each side just trying to think about breathing into that position and then we'll start to take our shoulder into flexion. So I'm trying to find a good position there and it's all pretty tight. Just trying to breathe in that position as well. What you can even do is just take glutes up into a little bit of a glute bridge, just put a little bit more pressure on there, don't worry if not. Then what I'm going to try and do is just thumb up, straight arm, and notice how the pressure on that ball changes as you go overhead. That was horrific. It's one of those moves that if you have got a lot of tension built up there, it can really stop you breathing that normal pattern. Oh, that was nasty. Try and get into full flexion, so don't come out, don't try and bend the elbow too much. So what you're doing here is kind of affecting how that rib cage attaches to your scapula and in turn how free your movement is overhead. Let's do a few more overheads there. moving that on to the other side. It's just going to mean that you can achieve that high elbow catch consistently and have a nice stable shoulder so that you can improve both the power of your stroke but also the uh, position of that catch as well. So again, just to reiterate, you never want to be actually pushing into the bone. You want a good chunk of muscle to deal with. You can kind of tell when the pain is good pain and it's just completely pointless. I'm just going to shift down a little bit so I can go to full flexion. Still fairly high up on that thoracic spine towards the top of that section. up into a glute bridge as well.
basically trying to seek out those tender spots and just let the muscle relax into it. Good, okay. So taking that cross ball away for a sec. So onto our next mobilization, I'm gonna use a resistance band for this one. This is quite a thin one. You might struggle with the thicker bands that you use to um, sort of get into the hips and things like that. But for this one, all I'm gonna do is come onto my knees and I wanna attach it to a point like a banister or a sofa leg or anything you've got to hand, like a squat rack maybe. And what I'm gonna do is just bring this into an overhead position. So I want my hands to be about shoulder width apart. So make sure you get a little bit of tension through that band. Face your armpits out. And we're gonna just come forward. So it comes just around the head, but you don't need to go too far. And as you go back, you're trying to actively control that range of motion. Okay, so we're just pulsing between two I'll come down a little bit so you can see me, it's a bit better. We're going between two ranges. Here, we never want to just fall back with that tension. We want to actively control it back. Notice that I'm not coming back like that with the, with the lumbar. I'm trying to get my T-spine to do all the work. Keep that tension on the band. Good, last two. Excellent, okay. Those shoulders are going to be pretty pumped by that. So, making sure with that one that you're not using that lumbar spine is key. Might be worth just doing it in the mirror or making sure we're just tucking it under with the pelvis, drawing the core in. So for the next one, I'm just gonna go into a simple uh, child's pose. So I'm on my knees and I'm gonna take a nice big reach out and I've got a nice rounded lumbar spine. For a lot of you, this is gonna be Quite a good mobilization on the lats already. You're gonna feel this sort of working in here. In which case, yeah, just hold that for a few breaths. What I'm gonna do is just try and work both hands over to one side. And then I'm gonna try and push in the direction of my left shoulder. So you see, I just come forward on the knees ever so slightly and I'm creating this big curve down the lats. Breathing into that one. as well. Yeah, just bring it over to the left side. Pushing in the direction of the right shoulder. Send all that breath into the stomach. Try and flare that rib cage.
excellent, okay. So stay in that same position. This is a mobilization we've done before. We're just gonna thread one arm under the other. Okay, so shoulder doesn't have to be in contact. In fact, you might find it useful just to have the elbow in contact and then just hang the shoulder. From there, I'm gonna twist in towards that shoulder. So what I'm trying to do is lengthen this tissue around here, around the rhomboids and around the, the rear delts. And that tissue that we were getting into with the foam roller, we're now just gonna try and almost, it's almost like you're trying to pull the shoulder off the back. Pull that scapula off the back. This one is quite tricky to find a good position, so you, you really do have to move around the first few times you do this. One more deep breath in this position. Go as much twist as you can through that torso. Onto the other side, thread it under, elbow down, hang the shoulder, and then twist it into it. find I can get a much better stretch on this side just because I think I'm more aware of this shoulder it's the one I use more often and it's the one that's more dominant in the swim as well <sighs> often you'll be trying to get into these positions thinking how do I even try and take that shoulder off the back or how do I do this sort of movement but it's because we haven't built up that neurological connection to the muscle we haven't been using it as much as we should. One more breath in this position. Excellent, okay, just give that a little move around in that all fours position. All right, so still working on that overhead movement, but we're gonna add a little bit of glute um, action in here as well. So I'm going to go from all fours and I'm going to try and extend both right leg and left arm. So as you do this, notice that your pelvis wants to tilt and your back wants to curve. You're going to just try and address that, flatten it out, push nice and strong through the right shoulder into the floor and just try and get a nice straight line here. This is really working that mobility, that strength at end range. Keep the breathing. Really pull that shoulder up overhead. Good, bring it back down nice and slowly. Moving on to the other side. Try and keep both toes facing behind you. Push with that left shoulder. Pin that arm behind the head.
gets a bit of heat in the body. We have another little move around before just coming back up onto the toes. I'm just going to push back into a downward dog nice and slowly, pedaling the feet one by one. Focusing on this overhead mobility today, so really focusing on turning those armpits outwards. Okay, so you're trying to externally rotate through the shoulder. Nice strong base with the, with the hands, with the shoulders. Keep the knees bent for now. Poke your bum up towards the ceiling. Push nice and tall. Coming back into plank position. And the last little mobilization we'll do, see if you can do this uh, nice and controlled. If you can't, just come down into it the normal way. Seeing if I can just come down onto my elbows. I'm just going to push forward slightly. And what I want to do from here, keep my uh, forearms parallel. And I'm going to try to really protract my shoulders so I'm spreading them apart, those scapula, before letting them sink back down. Try not to get all of the body in, uh, in, in, in this one. We're trying to just isolate the scapula movement. And we're going to go for 12 of these. as well but I find that takes a little bit of the weight off and it can help you focus more on that scapula itself if you struggle with that one by all means come on to all fours do exactly the same so that's it guys that's done for today be conscious of your movement be conscious of your body as you go forth and train and I'll see you back here tomorrow <laughs>